Hello, I'm Michael Vitarelli, and today we're going to talk about cyclic voltammetry. What are our objectives? First, I'm going to talk about the instrumentation, then the electrical dup layer. I'm going to review what a capacitor is and how the background produces a, a capacitive current. We're going to talk about oxidation and reduction. We're then going to talk about cyclic voltammetry and the electrical double layer. We're going to talk about reversible reactions. And finally, the Randall-Savick equation. Electrochemistry is a field in chemistry in which we study reactions of species which are typically hydrated ions in some solution. Cyclic voltammetry is a field of electrochemistry. However, this is a rather unique field. In cyclic voltammetry, we're going to apply a potential sweep across some conducting solution. In our case, we're going to go from 0 volts to 600 millivolts back down to 0 volts. Okay? During this time, the current is measured. In this current, we'll see peaks. These peaks are typically uh, reduction or oxidation processes. Okay? The linear portion of our uh, current is usually a capacitive current produced by the background, the, the uh, working electrolyte, in our case, one molar KCL. All right, so we have two items here, the cell and the potentiostat. The cell is simply a holder that holds our, our, our electrodes and our conducting solution. In this case, in our experiment, we're going to use a three electrode system, okay? That'll, con that'll consist of a working, reference, and counter electrode. However, this can, there can be other setups, including two and four electrode cells, okay? Our potential stack. This is an instrument that can simultaneously apply a potential while measuring the current. All right, so our electrodes. In, again, in this experiment, we're going to use a three electrode cell. Okay. the working, a counter, and a reference electrode, the electrolyte. In our case, we're going to use one molar KCL, okay? and we're going to apply a potential difference between 0 and 600 millivolts. We shouldn't see any oxidation or reduction from our uh, working electrolyte. Okay? However, our electroactive species, K4FeCN6, here in our in our uh, potential range between 0 and 600 millivolts, we will see oxidation and reduction. Okay. Okay. So the three electrodes. Our first electrode is the working electrode. This electrode has a well-defined area. In our case, 0 0.36 centimeters squared. Okay. This is where the reaction of interest takes place. The counter electrode is used simply to balance the charge for the working electrode. The reference electrode. This is used to hold the potential fixed relative between the working electrode and the reference electrode. The reference electrode is connected to giga ohm resistors. Okay, so the reference electrode does not draw any current. At least it will draw negligible current, and thus not partic not participate in the reaction. Okay, the electrical double layer. All right, so on the left, you see a positively charged surface. Pretend this positively charged surface is in some conducting solution, okay? This first layer we see of hydrated ions is called the stern layer. This layer is predominantly counter ions. In our case, negatively hydrated ions. The, the ions in this layer, the stern layer, do not balance the charge on the surface or electrode, okay? So you might think that the ions right up against the, the negative ions right up against this positive surface will balance that charge, but that's not the case, okay? The second layer is called the Goo-Chapman layer. This is an exponential distribution of ions. The ions closer to the, um, to the um, positively charged surface will be counter ions, again, negatively hydrated species. 
as we go further and further away, as we go further and further away from the you know, positively charged species, the negatively charged counter ions and the positive hydrated ions begin to balance out. There's this exponential distribution of ions. The closer we are to the surface, the more negatively charged ions the and the less the positively charged ions. If we look at the figure to the right over here, we see this graph here. The blue will represent the negatively charged hydrated ions, while the red represents the positively charged ions. Close to our surface, our positively charged surface, we have few positive ions and a great deal of negatively charged species. As we get further and further and further away, eventually when we get infinitely far from the electrode surface, the two species equilibrate and we have the same number, uh, the same concentration of negatively hydrated ions and positively hydrated ions, okay? So again, this would represent the bulk, an even, an even distribution of uh, positively hydrated ions and negatively hydrated ions. These little circle here pretend they're water molecules, okay? All right, this incidentally is the slip plane, okay? If, for instance, the electrode is moving, the hydrated ions in the stern layer will stay with the moving surface. Well, the other ions will not, okay? Okay, so uh, again, this is just the text of what I had just explained. Quickly again, we have this positively charged surface, primarily negatively hydrated ions, and then an exponential distribution of ions moving away from the positively charged surface until we reach bulk where infinitely far away from this surface where the concentration of negatively charged hydrogen ions and positively charged hydrogen ions is uh, equal or equal. All right, so let's review what a capacitor is. A capacitor is simply a separation of charge, okay? But now, what happens if we put some, we, we have this setup, what happens if we put some uh, ions in there, so potentially uh, K plus and Cl minus. Well, the K plus ions will move to the negative plate and the Cl minus ions will move toward the positive plate, okay? As the ions approach the plates, um, let's, let's consider the, um, let's consider the positive ions approaching the negative plate. As the positive ions approach the negative plate, an electron will approach the, the negatively charged plate to balance the K plus. As the Cl minus ion approaches the positively charged plate, an electron will move away, okay? So it'll create uh, a loop, a circuit, okay? However, there's no actual reaction. This is non-Faradaic. It's just, it's just, positively charged ions moving to plates, negatively charged ions moving to plates, and electrons moving around the circuit. No reaction. This is a non-Faradaic reaction. This will give us a weak current, okay, depending on the concentration and uh, potential difference. Again, depending on the concentration of the, depending on the concentration of our, um, of our, of our, in this case, K4, Fe, Cn6, will have a much weaker current from this capacitance, from this capacitive current. All right, so again, this is uh, just what uh, our background will look like, okay? From zero to 600 millivolts, and then back to zero millivolts for one molar KCl, okay? As I'll talk about later, this, uh, later, this is our run A, just our background. Okay, so what we'll do later is we'll subtract this from our data sets, from all of our data sets. Notice this is in microamps, okay? Uh, again, this is a roughly equivalent to charging capacitor. As we increase the potential, the current increases. As we decrease the potential, the current decreases. All right, 
So, reminder of oxidation and reduction. Okay, the anode is the electrode at which oxidation occurs. Here's an example. So zinc going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrodes. The cathode is the, elect is the, is the electrode at which reduction occurs. Here's an example of reduction. Uh, Cu2 plus, go, plus 2 electron goes to uh, copper solid. Okay, and again, this is just our overall reaction. So uh, as a mnemonic device, remember, car and auto. Car, cathode reduction, auto, anode oxidation. Okay. Here is our, here, what, here is what happens to our species in an aqueous solution. We start with K4FeCN6 and we put it in solution. So we get uh, FeCN6 4 minus and uh, K plus, uh, 4 moles of K plus per mole of uh, FeCN6 4 minus. Okay, so oxidation. Again, this is going to occur at the anode. We have our 4 minus species going to 3 minus and we get an electron. And the opposite, uh, this is going to happen at the cathode, we have reduction. We have our 3 minus species plus an electrode, uh, excuse me, plus an electron going to a 4 minus species. This is a Faradaic current, okay? This Faradaic current is generated by this oxidation or reduction of our species at the electrode, okay? This will be much greater than our non-Faradaic, our capacitive current that we saw uh, previously. Okay, so this is a typical cyclic voltammogram. Before I even explain this, um, some books present this uh, in different ways. In this, we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, oxidation, pro here we're going to see oxidation, and then here we're going to see reduction. But sometimes you see it reverse. Sometimes in books you'll see uh, reduction and then oxidation. It depends on your electrolyte uh, and the, excuse me, it, depend, it depends on your, um, uh, the species of interest and it depends on your uh, potential range, okay? All right, so here, first we're just gonna slowly increase the potential. We're going from zero to 600 millivolts in our case. We're gonna first get this roughly linear uh, capacitive current, okay? If there was no, um, electroactive species, we would just get this kind of uh, increased uh, line here, like we saw previously. It won't be perfectly straight, but let's uh, assume it's going to be straight, okay? So then we get to some point in the potential, and then suddenly we start to see this spike in current. Hmm, yeah, that's interesting. So here we're gonna get some oxidation of our actual um, species. Let's return to our previous slide. So here we have we're gonna get this oxidation of this species here. We start with this FeCN6 four minus, okay? It's going to oxidize to FeCN6 three minus and we're gonna get an, an electron. That electron will go into the, into the electrode, okay? And we get current. As you would expect, you increase the current and we, you increase the potential and you get more and more and more um, uh, current. But then there's something strange here it starts to fall off. Why could that happen? Keep in mind, now, remember your, remember the electrical double layer. Let's, let's go to the next slide. Good. Okay, so here's our electrical double layer. What's happening, first of all? We have this, we have these negatively charged species here, and they're going to oxidize on our, um, our electrode as we continuously increase the potential. But what's happening here? we're slowly going to actually deplete the, um, uh, the um, FeCN6 4 minus near our electrode. As we do that, we build up some 3 minus species, but we need 4 minus species. So what we're going to have to do is species, 4 minus species, are going to have to come diffuse from farther and farther away to oxidize at the surface here, okay? So if you remember what current is, current is dq dt, okay? So as the species diffuses from farther and farther away, it takes more and more time for that species to diffuse to the uh, electrode, okay? 
we have this region here is also called a depletion layer, okay? As we increase the potential, we're going to deplete this layer. So as we increase the, this potential, we have to draw from farther and farther away. So again, current dq dt, the time it takes for a species to, to diffuse from farther and farther away increases. So our current actually drops because over a given time period, we're actually going to get less species oxidizing. Okay, great. And then, Okay, and then we uh, increase our potential until we get, in our case, about 600 millivolts, and then everything basically reverses, okay? Um, uh, we, undergo, we undergo reduction, uh, we reduce and reduce and reduce and more until we run out of things to reduce. Okay. This is, so I provided this data for you that I took uh, in, in the lab. Uh, there's some uh, links in the YouTube description below. So here is our run B, C, D, and E, okay? So run B is, all of these are in one molar KCL. Run B is one millimolar uh, K4 FeCN6. Run C is two millimolar, five millimolar, 10 millimolar. Uh, of course, as we increase the concentration of the electroactive species, um, the FeCN64 minus, the more current we get. Okay, great. Reversible reactions. So let's just let's just review these peaks. See this peak here and see this peak here? They're not on top of each other. They're shifted a little bit, okay? So if this shift is less than 57 over n millivolts, where n is the number of electrons transferred, in our case, just one electron. So if, I'm gonna go back, if this difference between here and here is approximately 57 millivolts, then you can say the reaction is reversible, okay? Great. Um, also, if the peak current, so this would be the peak oxidative current, this would be the peak reductive current, if the ratio, if the, if the absolute value of the ratio of these two is about one, then the reaction is reversible. So let's just consider a completely non-reversible reaction. What would we see? Well, we might see these peaks here, but maybe if the reaction is completely not reversible, we would not see any of these peaks here, okay? Great. Uh, other things that can make the reaction not reversible is um, contamination on the electrode surface, uh, high solution resistivity, amongst other things. Okay, so uh, this is what you're going to use, uh, this randell savickic equation, okay? So I'm not gonna derive it, I'm just prevent, uh, presenting it here for you, okay? so. Let's let this be our, uh, well, let's first describe this. So this is our peak current, okay? Uh, this is just some number, 296. This N, this is the number of electrons that are transferred. In this case, just one. So this is just one. This is the area in centimeters squared of our working electrolyte. I mentioned that earlier. It's 0 0.36 centimeters squared. This is the diffusion coefficient of our species. So that's one thing uh, we're going to look at. Another thing we're going to modulate is the scanner rate, okay? That's in volt per second. I'll get back to that in a bit. And this is the concentration of our electroactive species. Okay, so now there's two things that we're going to, we're going to use this actual twice, okay? If you look at the data below, um, run E has uh, five different runs. In run E, we're fixing uh, the concentration of the electroactive species, but we're modulating the scan rate, okay? So in one case, uh, this will be constant. All this in here will be, um, not this, not the diffusion constant. So, well, it will be constant, but that's what you're going to find. This will be your X variable, and this will be your Y variable. So what you'll get is this diffusion coefficient, okay? So everything else will be your, if you have Y equals MX, this will be your X, everything else will be your M, and this will be your Y, okay? Great, 
So then you can solve for your diffusion coefficient. The other thing is, if you, I'm going to go back. If you look at the data, there's a run F in the data. So that run F will be, if you plot it, it'll be somewhere in here. You're going to use this equation again. However, the scan rate will be fixed and you're going to find the concentration of your working electrolyte. Okay, so again, you're going to use this twice. The first time, your um, independent variable will be the um, will be the scan rate, and then the second time, the independent variable will be your concentration. Okay, great. Um, all right, that's about it. Thank you.